Today in America, videos of officers are going viral more and more than ever before. And at Mr. Checkpoint, we are encouraging you to always film the police. We are going to be exposing officers who do good and holding the ones who do wrong accountable. We are not anti-cop, we are anti-bad cop. And here I have an amazing panel. We're going to watch some videos, go over some news stories, and see if we can learn anything from what's going on every day. <laughs> the panel. Stephanie, she is a lawyer. She has represented dozens of people in trial as a public defender. She was behind Prop 36, which freed hundreds of people from uh, heinous and harsh and archaic crime bills. She is a dog lover. Let's welcome yeah. Stephanie. A retired police officer for 11 years. She was with the force of LAPD, born and raised. She is now a therapist for children with autism. Welcome, Hadia Kennedy. <laughs> and a social justice warrior, a business savage. He savage. is an uncle <laughs> to many. He is the chairman of the Foundation of Ethnic Understanding and the ambassador of the UN Slavery Memorial. He is the founder of Fat Farm Def Jam. Vegan Yogi Russell Simmons. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We're going to jump into a story that just came out this week. This is a Parkland officer who was at the scene during the shooting last year. And this is the first time ever where this officer. There's an off there, he's actually a security guard, but he is being charged for not going into the school when it's being shot up. <clears throat> and, you know, my question for Hadia is like, in terms of your training, yeah. are you supposed to go into a building that your life is threatened? You know, are you supposed to put your life on the line? Yes, you're first responder, and that is our primary job to go towards the gunshots and not run away. So that's what we're supposed to do. That's is there ever a reason that you would turn away? Scared. Yes. I, I just feel like yes. Is, is that? Exactly. A, do you think that's a good reason, that's though, a, to not go in? I wouldn't say it was a good reason. I mean, you chose this job. Your job is to yeah. defend the public, you know, and of course, mm -hmm. she could answer, but... Yeah. If you were defending this officer, <laughs> what, what would you think to do? Um, <laughs> that's tough. Um, I would just want to see why he didn't go in. Right. That's right. the main thing. Yeah, I mean, right. maybe he has trauma in his past. We don't know what's going on there. So mm. I would probably go that route. I he's think. a security guard. Right. He's a security guard. But for the school, he should have gone. He should have gone in. These he are kids. Right. I mean, he have. yes, he was an armed security guard, and now he faces eleven charges of neglect, uh, and he's on bond for one hundred and two thousand dollars. And this is like the first time we've ever seen an probably officer be charged salary. for not doing something. For okay. neglect. I don't know if it's that is that serious. It's just. A security guard. He doesn't have the same training as a police officer, so that's very as true. As a first responder, yeah. And do you, so, if he was a police officer, would it, you feel like it would go down the same? Oh, he way? definitely would be charged. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. Wow. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that's why you have the gun. That, You're yeah, supposed to help people. I'm, I mean, I'm there. The <laughs> but he did have a gun, right? He this, did have a gun. Why would he have a gun if he's a security guard? It's awful. All right, so let's watch some videos that have gone viral. Some of these have been sent to us. Uh, this one is from New Jersey. It was a suicidal man in the hospital. He is handcuffed, and it's an officer filming another officer uh, conducting what you'd hope was an investigation. You see my cheek? Go at it. You got the right guy. Hey. Why do they bitch. I'm a what? Do it! Oh. Ah. Oh, oh, I mean, he's in a bed. I'm sorry. I mean, did he just make? Is, he made him bleed. He's totally. Calm your ass down. down. I believe his left hand is handcuffed. Right. Um, you know that officer was sentenced to five years. Mm. Um, For what now, charge? 
So it was actually a previous, Assault. it wasn't. He allegedly took marijuana cocaine from the scene of another thing, of another case oh. and actually got charged for that. Oh. oh, well, he's a criminal. Obviously, the way he did that abusive thing he just did was shocking, but right. it's not that shocking since it's, I see all your videos. You know, I watch your site. I see yeah. constantly, you know, people abusing their their their, their job, you know, and, and people because of it. So, I mean, that's not... Unlike a but lot it's of so shit we see. But blatant seen. because he's looking at the camera and smiling, like, oh, watch but, me do this. So that was the other officer's personal phone? Yes. Okay, yes. so they, they assumed it was going to stay between the two of them because I it was on his phone. Must have. Right. Yeah. Look it, at that again. Let's see that one. <laughs> Can we see it again? Because look at his face. He's, mm -hmm. that one smiles. It's a smirk. It's like yeah. a smirk. <laughs> watch me do this. Hey. That was terrible. I'm a bitch. I'm a what? Do it. And his face Look. is already swollen, so you that wonder if he... After he hits him that hard. This is pissed. So off. for the prior Senate, did he actually destroy evidence? Is that what he did? It doesn't, it didn't mention that specifically, but he apparently started his sentence May 20th, 2019, which means he would be in jail now. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my question is, if you had a coworker, right, or your partner That's did something question. like that, uh -huh. And you brought it to your superior, like what would you imagine happening or? Um, basically, if I went to my captain and told him what he did and showed him, or well, it's on his phone. If you so had that video. If I, if I had that video, I would definitely show him. And he would be sat down and talked to. I can't tell you for sure if he would be fired or not because it's a, it's a process. Like this is why a lot of officers get off the way they do because it takes a lot to fire an officer for whatever reason. Like I'm still not sure because it's like what's wrong is wrong. So what? How are you still working? Have you ever tried to bring something up and then they were like? Does anybody Shh. bring anything up? That's the question we're asking. Like it's, we want if they hold each other accountable at all. No, there's there's definitely a culture within the LAPD where they will keep things quiet. And do you think that's just LAPD that's or is that no, no. Right. You work with him every day. Every day he's doing dumb <laughs> no. shit. It, no, I constantly work with, with officers that I didn't want to work with anymore. And I just removed myself from the situation. The fortunate thing is cops don't do that. They'll stick with their partner all the time, have mm. their back all the time, even when they're wrong. And that's not okay. Well, that's the real problem. That's the culture. And that culture isn't being broken by, you know, except, you know, if you're a cop and you're on duty, it, it is bad as a cop on duty to watch your man do something stupid yeah. and it get filmed and he gets in trouble and you don't get questioned. Right. That's, the, I think, where the culture has you have to expand on the, 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 the pursuit of justice. Like, yes. you're watching this, you're guilty too. Right. If you're watching it and you didn't report it, you, you should be guilty. Right. And, and mostly you're not, right? No, no, most of the time if, they're not. You, I mean, I'm with, I'm with Senate and we're both cops. The Senate gets out the car and smacks the shit out of some kid and drags him by his hair and does all that stuff. And I watch. And then it's filmed and it shows yeah, up. you're in just the, as guilty. But this, do I get in trouble? You should. But, but, but do you? No. 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 And if it was on but the Senate street. But really we, in trouble. He's, I mean, everybody well, in the world he, seen it. Right. He's done this. You're so in the cases where we catch it. cops doing shit on your video and on videos around the country... So when the cop has done something really incredibly wrong, it's very obvious, his partner who saw it, who witnessed it, and in some ways is a, a quiet and willing participant, gets no trouble. Almost never, right? Almost right. never. Well, never kind of I've never seen that ever. And I've never seen the superior that's, that's like hiding it or not following through with it ever get in trouble really either. Right. It's like if you they, fucked if up, we you were got just, caught, by. If we were citizens and we him, did... They put him inside and take him out of sight so nobody well, says horrible. anything. It's horrible. And that's where the, the laws need to be adjusted and where we need to kind well, of put the, pressure. There's, the there's lots of things... held accountable. And I say that. You know, I had a picture the other day because I do this thing with... And we had this whole thing with the police department. We have these peacekeepers across the country. And there was this moment where we had this dialogue and... There's so many things we can do aside from building bridges, which we have to do. We can't always just demonize the police, right? You that know that. We true. know that. And you can't always just... But little things like that, and that's a big thing. This is what you protest for, yeah. to hold everybody accountable for their brother, and then they become uh, a different unit. And the culture has to change because now I'm in trouble and you fuck up, so yo, you got to <laughs> stop. Then we call each other to it. That's an obvious law that should be passed or discussed or... Pro or policy that should be implemented discuss, that yes. we don't do. Right. You know, we don't force fight. For, that's what the, the the fighting is about. When Black Lives Matter is out in the street, they should be talking about things like that as well. Sounds to me, you know, that they should be talking about more than just the guilty officers, but the officers 
who are guilty by association. Yes. Yeah. That's that way people change. Like, right. yo, you get yeah. me in trouble. I'm a right. good cop and you're doing this. And now I can't sit with you for right. real. I right. really have to tell on you and everything else because I can't afford for my family and everything. my job. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And if that was you and I and you film me doing that, like you would get in trouble if we if we weren't officers, right? You would be an accomplice. Oh, accomplice. Isn't that what it would be? Yes. Right? It's a crime. Right. Yes. The guy who filmed it is in trouble. So my he would be no, he, no, no, I, no, I he would be an aider and a better. That's right. what that is. So you, oh, he okay. would he's encouraging this act. Right. You like that guy. Right. You can bring both. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you would bring aid and a bedding against the guy who's filming all day long. So definitely assault. Yeah, Man. that's assault. So what would the process be in changing a law to avoid these kind of things continuing? Ugh. Um. So community involvement's huge. Yes. Getting everyone aware of the issues, but yeah. it's going to your congressman. That's how you change laws. They have to be put on bills. Once they're put on bills, then it goes from there. Calling, but emailing. Calling, emailing. And in San Diego, we have something called a Citizens Review Board. I don't know if oh. Los Angeles has this or other counties, but it's citizens. And they get complaints from family members that are in custody or they hear word on the street and they go investigate. Oh. And they actually hold the sheriff, because that's who it is in San Diego, who deals with the jail, responsible for everything. Mm. And like, mm. it is... That's fantastic yeah, it just good. started oh okay mm -hmm. it just started and i refer a lot of my uh clients families to this because it's absurd all right well i think we can all assume this is a every one citizen. star <laughs> but every citizen yeah or board zero should, zero one. should hold those who are next next to um police who have abu been abusive responsible you know everybody should that that's a real public discussion that we should have that you should promote that everybody should that way even the good cops, which are you know most cops, I guess, right? Yeah, there are most cops. So the good cops, cops out there, they would say, "Thank God that there's this thing," because now yes. you know what? Now you fuck with my job. You know what? Shit, what you do was you know I had the the, the, the code, the, mm -hmm. the culture, all that. Yeah, that's gone now because I'm not going to jail for right. What you do. And right. as an officer who's a good cop, you would feel better too. I feel much better having that. Less implemented. stress. That's another stress <laughs> that's gone. Yeah, I, I look at it like this. We have laws and penalties to like dissuade us as citizens from doing wrong, right? You steal the car, you're going to go to jail. But I think with the officers, because the accountability is not there, that they end up don't feeling like if they do something wrong, something will happen. So you have no incentive to not do wrong, unfortunately. Yeah. They also right. need to start prosecuting police officers for actions. Yes. This is uh, was like in this Florida. One. This video did go viral. And uh, I see all of these, by the way, because I, you know, I have all the sites, and especially yours, that, that gives us stuff. <laughs> I um, appreciate um, that. Yeah, probably. You saw yeah, this it's one? important because we want to hold people responsible. We want to make a change. I mean, look, I grew up, this was the norm. All this shit we see that's so shocking. Police have become bad. No, unfortunately, they. this, this is just, um, in fact, it's a better police because they've been filmed because now there's a, a possibility of getting caught. Right. So there's a, the departments are all on a higher alert for this kind of behavior where before there was no chance of yeah. anybody ever correcting you. Now, when I grew up, in That's my true. hood, there was like the police coming. Oh, shit. We're in trouble. And you have bad experience? Come regard? on, man. Stop. Everybody has bad experience. What's your Why? worst experience? They, they would just treat you like shit, whatever. Like when you stand, if you're hanging out in the park and the police come in the park, you're in trouble. You don't have to do nothing. They throw you in the ground. They treat you badly. They do whatever. They take. They go in your pocket, see if you got drugs. They would do whatever you and just leave you there and whatever. You, it, you, I, this idea of you know, how you search people, all uh -huh. those questions, never had a question. <laughs> Like empty your pockets right now. Everybody, <laughs> empty your pockets against the wall. Okay, take your shit and leave. That was just normal. If you were a kid today, after following know, Mr. Checkpoint, after, after following Mr. Checkpoint, I'd what would you do? I'd You'd film, film him. Yeah, That's good. Obviously. I appreciate. It. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's play this clip. It's okay. Reggie, hey, don't resist. Reggie, don't resist. Oh, hey, no, what the fuck? No, 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 Friends. Yeah, the friends. We they all were awesome. white friends. That's That's all I can say. Awesome. Because he's <laughs> that just was a, awesome. You know, it, I mean, I'm, I'm really like, like, don't you touch him? All that. Black mm -hmm. people wouldn't do that. <laughs> do you, you, know, do you we think? We appreciate that. I don't think it's, it's, it's common amongst African Americans to yell at the police like that when no. something like that's going on. Like they're usually quiet. Say, Reggie, don't resist. That's the first thing. And yeah. then after that, yeah. don't you touch him and all that. That's not coming out of a black kid's mouth. Mm -hmm. We know better than that. But it's great to have white friends. 
<laughs> in this situation. Do, do you think that the friend pulling the officer's arm could have created more of an issue? Or? Yeah, definitely. Not a little white have. girl, no. It could have. It but, could have, but uh, yeah, not like, what do you do, punch her? But he pushed her. There is such thing. By the way, yeah. he pushed her. No, he put her on the ground. Yeah, Easily. But, That's called assaulting a peace officer or delaying the officer when he's trying to contact this kid. Right. right. It happens all the time. I mean, obviously, it's not the right thing for anybody to do with that situation, but it is, I do believe, and not say, oh, you're black, so you believe that. No, I believe that, you know, black guys, black people won't do that. And white people get away with that more yeah. often. There is such a white privilege. I definitely right. agree. We're I agree all with that. agree? Yes. That's true. Okay. Yes. Right, because, do you, and, well, do you agree, so, Senator? Saying that, do you think if, if the person who took his wrist off was black, it would have been a different outcome? Oh, totes. Yeah. I feel like he'd be arrested. And like. Interesting. See, that's the, yeah. What do yeah. you think? I think so. Yeah. Okay, well, there we I go. So, so. Yeah. Uh, it's so sad, the polarization of our society today versus even only five or seven or ten years ago. The separate, you know, the, the, the rise of white supremacy, the, the ignorance that's growing everywhere, the, like weeds. It's right. sad, you yeah, know. The ignorance is getting out it's of control. It's getting out of control. And, and you know what? People are, are comfortable. I mean, you can't only blame, blame Trump, but you can blame him a lot. You know, a lot of it is Trump, but it's... it's <laughs> Is it right? getting it's, worse or are we just seeing it more or people well, more Well, the police thing is probably, I would say, because of the filming of police, it's probably, you know, leveled off or getting better, even though it looks horrible. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think just the racism in our country, you know, whether it's Islamophobia or homophobia or, or you know, anti-Semitism or, or race, you know, against our people of color, it is on fire right now. And I was the chairman of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. We did all kinds of research and reports, and I see the doubling and tripling of hate crimes, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. against Jews, or the doubling and tripling of hate crimes against blacks. I see that. We yeah. have the research, yeah. you know. So it's really shifting, yeah. you know, for the worse. And I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not good. So to, to touch on the race, what do you think about when there's like all these school shootings? Typically, it's a white man. And his mugshot, he usually... What is it with that? I mean, I don't yeah. understand why black people don't join in. I mean, like... <laughs> no, I mean, I, meant, I took it wrong. I mean, what I mean was, why are only white people these particular felons? Like, they're the only mass shooters. Oh, yeah. They're only yeah, mass killers. Well, black people never, for instance, eat people. Like, you know, chop them up and eat them. They just don't do it. Right. Like, there's certain things black people don't Correct. do a lot of. Correct. Not I'm, a lot of serial killers. I'm not saying right. it's not right. racial, racist. For me I to, mean, but that's what we see. That's just what we see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how come they don't ever fuck with white people? They come out like, he ate eight people. He's sorry. He used to be a high school valedictorian. You know, right. they don't be like, walking like him out when black people get arrested, it's like, you know, he had, once he had an argument with his teenage uh, girlfriend, no, you know, they, they find it's just things the, the, the to, photos to demonize that they show them. them. Right. Like, yeah. Bring the worst photo. Yeah, they well, look at the different black, mug um, shots, though, yes. of someone in jail for yes. something like nonviolent drugs or whatever yeah, it might be. Find, and then like, the worst picture. The mug yeah. shot of someone that's a mass shooter, though, I find that the person in custody is like beaten up who's. Let's say black and drug oh, yeah. offense, yeah. rather than the person. How has a person killed so many people with guns and is yeah. not beaten up no. and it's safely like, like taken like out? About, like, I'm saying, but treated like a human well, being. A lot well, of people right. with no guns treated are getting like beaten up. So how how, sure. how could that be? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad you recognize. It. I mean, I think people, you know, it's it, it's an ignorance or unwillingness to face the truth regarding race today and issues today, and and people also in some ways, uh, you know, are complicit by being so quiet so often, you know, and I feel like that's really, you know, a lot of white America doesn't realize or they don't face the truth about racism and how difficult it is. They say, well, you, you have equal rights. Yeah, but you, there are things that, you know, they're not, they're not promoted properly, so they're not really equal. And so there's all these things that people don't see, even though it's in front of their face. And the more people, like I always spent, and I don't want to talk too much, but I always spent a lot of time getting Muslims to fight anti-Semitism and getting Jews to fight Islamophobia. For 25 years, that was my job, and we did it. And it was so much more effective having Jews fight Islamophobia. And, and when I am Muslim for a day rally, it was led by rabbis. We got rabbis to, to lead it. Mm. Wow. And the, you know, it's always better to fight for the other. People respect it. And if white people say that you know, the abuse of blacks is, is, is real in the police departments around the country, then whites will listen. So, you know, you know, and when Jews defend themselves, they're like, oh, always complain of Jews. It's true. They don't say it because they don't really believe they're always complaining of Jews. Mm. But there's something about it that's less effective than when a Muslim comes out and say anti-Semitism is real and we stand with the Jews against 
hate in general, but specifically today we're talking about anti-Semitism. It means something. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. we need to do more of that. We need to help other. I mean, I was mm-hmm. a chairman. Yes. I didn't. I wasn't a Muslim or a Jew. I just ran the foundation. Mm. You know. Right. So anyway, that's experience. Get others to fight. Give people what you want for yourself. Give others what you want for yourself. That's, you know. Anyway, Charles Kinsley, what's that? So this is a uh, a therapist, and there was a call for a nine one one call for someone wanting to commit suicide. The police came, and if we roll the clip, we'll Kurt. watch what occurred. Is that Kurt in LA? No. Oh. No. So the therapist is trying to explain, like, you know, he's really trying to get the autistic guy to just lay down. The therapist is the one on his back. He's like, please don't shoot me. So what ends up happening, they shot the therapist who was laying down like this. What? When when they were asked the officer, uh, you know, what were you doing? He goes, I tried to shoot the other guy. So he's trying to shoot the autistic guy. For what? And then he says, for what? And he goes, I don't know. And so what actually happened what? with this is the officer was arrested in 2017 on charges for attempted manslaughter and negligence. But in 2019, there was a mistrial and it hasn't been retried. So Shut what up. does that mean? That's fucking bullshit. Right. The DA in any, especially fucking California, they retry everything. Keep right. fucking trying it. Keep going. And that's fucking crazy. Yeah. The question this one is, also, why wasn't it retried? That's the question. Shocker then, why it wouldn't be retried. Obviously, this is going to open. This is the other thing that bothers me is when DAs protect peace officers' civil suits. Mm. And so they won't go after them because then it does open them up. And they are saying, yeah, he did but something wrong. But there's a civil suit that follows, right? I'm yes. Sure. yes. Right. Absolutely. This guy died, no. That's what no, he th- th- thankfully didn't die. And three shots were fired. He was only hit what once. What did he shoot but- him for? It's pretty wild. I mean, it's crazy because you don't there, see you any. Don't see anything happening. There's no gun. There's the kid is just sitting up. He should I be mean, charged for it both. Absolutely of them. makes no sense. This this child apparently is. Uh, I think he's autistic. And like in terms of you now working right. with people, like what was your experience, or is there any training in dealing with people with autism? There's not uh, enough training, and it's it's really needs to be more training in persons with disabilities. You know, not. Being able to talk, being deaf, blind, you know, autistic, because you never know what you're going to run into, especially mental disabilities. You really have to feel things out when you're approaching someone with a mental disability or you have to really just pay attention to what you're approaching. A lot of officers don't do that, but we don't get trained enough to do that either. We get like a little scenario and then that's it. And then you're just thrown out in the street. But, you know, I had a background in psychology, so I approach mm. things differently. But a lot of officers don't do that. How, how long was your training from, like, day one to when you were an officer? 28 weeks. 28 weeks. And it's weeks. shorter now. And uh, you're, ba- you're now. a therapist now? It Was that unrelated, longer training? Unrelated. No, no, no. I I'm was on the job for 11 right, right. years. But and the then. academy was just 28 weeks. I understand. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, it yeah. is. They can so, do it. They do it in San Diego. That's why I asked you. Pert, the P-E-R-T. There's actually people. So in a situation like this, 5150, where they're like, oh, oh yeah, we have a smart team. They call it a smart, smart. team. Okay. And they but assist the not peace officers. Always, they're not always available. Like there's mm. loopholes to these things. They'll say, oh yeah, we have this, this, and this. But when the call actually happens and we really need that help, they're not there right away. And we have, as the first responder, we have to deal with that person who has a disability, who's maybe has a knife, maybe doesn't. But you just, you have to figure it out. And that's right, where the I training mean, comes in. Yes, but there's always that step back right. that you can take yes. in certain situations, especially think, if it's a mom calling or a dad calling. dealing with disabilities, that's you should take a step back and try always, to figure it out. Always. 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 And that's, that's a sad thing. And that thing. doesn't happen enough. Yeah. So I think we, again, one star for that, this officer. Uh, yeah. That's for well, sure. Yeah, zero. 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 You like zero? zero. <laughs> he shot start? two innocent people for no He's reason. One to five. It's zero. Okay, zero. We'll do zero. We're giving out zero. We're doing zero. 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 He tried to shoot somebody and shot someone else. 
And no, then okay. didn't know why you shouldn't have done it. And we don't even know why it happened. I need a five star clip. Could you imagine let's if go to you went out on the street and started shooting people for no reason? Five a minute ago. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. Let's go. I'm Israel. I'm Jewish. Don't you go to Israel? Don't you know every Jew in Israel? What type of shit is that? No, I don't know this guy. <laughs> oh, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen this one? I have. There needs to be oh, yeah. more of this. So the officer is fixing a person's car that, you know, is pushing and that, that's, nice. that's, that's, awesome. that's service, right? Yeah. 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 He really uses that every day. Like he actually pays Aww. attention to the community. How, how much of your time is supposed to be like protecting and how much is serving? Or do they give you an idea of like... No, there's no... You just do... What you do, what man. You I do. even answer. I ain't a cop. I can answer that. <laughs> you do. It yeah. Well, how, how often do you see officers serving? Forget protecting. How often shoot. do you see them serving? Forget well, the protecting. I, I never see lot. this. This is why this goes viral. Yeah. And this is easy, right? Yeah. It's easy, yeah. It and then com- easy. this one compared to all the officers like being bad. Right. We many? need to see it. So my goal is like people who only experience. I love putting these videos up by myself on my own Instagram. I love yeah. putting them up and I think uh, the community needs to see them. And I do believe that there's a bridge that can be built. But you can't really start building the bridges without, we talked about that first experience. Having a discussion. Yeah, yeah needs- like we need, like you need to make them accountable through their partners and all that. You need to do little things by the police department. That's part of the process of building a bridge. You have to right. make an effort. Your sensitivity trainings and all these things right. are good, but they're forced on the cops whenever right. they have them. Right? Exactly. 100%. Yeah. Not whenever really... a situation happens, we have training. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Right. Yeah. Escapes it. But you know, the idea of having... It should be already in there. Mm-hmm. Implemented. Right. That's right. And, and I think the bridge that you're talking about with Mr. Checkpoint specifically, it's like showing people who are always and only abused by cops. That Look, there are officers who do serve. Yes. And then showing yes. the people <coughs> who, have, who don't think that... Thing. Officers can be abusive or could right, be bad. Right. That all, that also I happens. Think both sides right. should be definitely seen. Yes, you, um, that way. Do you people highlight don't these have like, absolutely. You know. So this clip's uh, Gilroy, California. This actually was a gentleman who was woken up at 2 a.m. He thought of AFTP. Always film the police. He started recording, and it it shows a gentleman exiting his car, and we'll, we can watch it. So as you can see, to me, it looks like he's complying. Yeah, I don't yeah, see any is, type of resisting, do you? They're giving him, they're giving him some directions. Mm-hmm. If, if you see him resisting, you let me know. No, he's complying right now. Whoa! Oh, why is he getting bit oh by a dog? Oh, wait, and then Did he punch him? Punch Hold him? on! What is wait this? a minute. Wait, he was already in handcuffs. He was Whoa. already in handcuffs. Now nice. he's beating him up. Wait, what? The other, you know also that the dogs, which I love all of them, but the police dogs can also have records. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they're just aggressive. Yes. And they know this. <coughs> so we but can also get into their stuff. So the, keep, the, the saddest thing about this is this particular video, I shared it. It went on my Facebook. The guy reached out and said, that's me in the video. Oh. I'm Jesse. That's me. I have like 11 stitches in my leg from the dog. Oh, my god. He said... I said, what were you charged with? Say? Resisting arrest. I said, well, why were you? What was the contact? I said, why were you pulled over? Uh, I, they thought I was the person involved in a robbery close by. Wrong guy. But so, how was he resisting? How is he? No. How? But that's the thing. Without the footage and someone recording, he's just another case of resisting arrest, that's even though wrong. there's no case, right? right? You can get resisting arrest without there even initially being a reason to be arrested. Right. It's usually And this attitude. is the proof. And what happened yeah. to him now? What the the, so he's able to fight the charges <laughs> yeah. of the resisting arrest, and now he has a civil case clearly Absolutely. against the department. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But this is... Well, you should, you know, you really have to work with... I know that we met uh, uh, Ben Crump. Yes. You got to get a team of lawyers. Because, you know, when, when people are victims, you know, nowadays, there's always a lawyer that wants a piece of your check. There's all these people out right now and lawyers are working for free all over the place, making a lot of money, some of them. And you should have a team of lawyers because you are always, almost always, uh, in the center of one of these kind of disputes. And, you know, if you have a team of lawyers then maybe the work that you do, that you do for free, maybe you can fund it. That way I wouldn't have to always pay for dinner. I fuck with you. I'd That's you true. Pay for You're a smart man. Yeah. Trying to get me to pay for your dinner. <laughs> Look, not oh, all, yeah. not all not cops really. are bad. I think there's a lot of departments trying to make good in the community. This is yeah. good. This I is wanted good. to share this one That's with cute. Russell. This is really this good. is some new stuff. I, I have a, listen. Meditation always helps. Yes. There is no way that stillness doesn't give people a, a sense of calm yes. and start a process to change the way they see the world. So if you teach 
offices to meditate, sometimes they can breathe before they respond. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. very important. Yes. So, you know, itchy so fingers and all that, that goes away. Five stars to Cleveland oh, Police yeah. Department, yeah. baby. Yeah. All right, hey, what's one tip from you if someone were to be dealing or interacting with police? What's That's dumb. <laughs> it's like always film the police, right? <laughs> so you gotta go, I thank you for coming. Wait, so how amazing was it having Russell here? Oh awesome. my gosh, yeah. he's such a good guy. He I wanna be the lawyer that he's talking points. about. Yeah. He provides a good uh, perspective, I think, to this, no, this issue. Well, he's yeah. been doing it for decades. Absolutely. Right. And he's seen the change. Yes. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, something with Mr. Checkpoint, we take a lot of questions from the community. And so we have three amazing people who submitted their questions and we oh, could answer them and see if we can help them out. Yes. Hey, Mr. Checkpoint, Patrick here of The Daily Ember. Big fan, supporting you for a long time now. Just had a question, was curious, if people get pulled over and they don't want to video record the altercation or their uh, arrest, uh, can they still audio record and use that as evidence as well? Uh, what is your comment on this or recommendation? You wanna? Sure, um, yes. So Patrick, if you cannot video record, absolutely audio record. Because the only issue there is foundation. In California so the person who actually gets pulled over can say well that's my voice and then the officer on the stand you'd say well officer isn't that your voice that's exactly and, that's and, you're, exactly good. Right. <laughs> and you're good you get everything the only downside to that is you don't actually get to see what's happening and so there can be a difference in opinion saying well that was actually him hitting me or him smacking me or whatever it is but no you can do that and that's absolutely evident in court What's up, Patrick? And I 100% agree. In fact, like the case that I went through uh, where I sued the Santa Monica Police Department and had a settlement of $70,000 was literally with audio footage. There was no video. I don't personally even like if pulled over, I don't suggest holding the camera and like filming like this. Like what right, if they say, right. oh, that looked like this, that looked like that. My experience is I don't even let the officer know. I'm just recording. All right, let's go to the next question. Hey, Mr. Checkpoint, I'm a huge fan of your work. And my question to you is, if I get pulled over by a police officer and I'm asked to step out of the car, what are my rights? Now, as an officer, are you <laughs> able to help shed some light on what her rights are? Yes, her rights are basically to comply with what he asks at that moment. If he, if she has a question on why she's getting out of the car, she absolutely needs to ask. Why are you asking me to get out of the car? What are you pulling me over for? What is the violation? All these things, everybody has a right to ask. And it's very important because then you make the officer comply to tell you, to actually tell you why you're being pulled over, why you're getting stepped out the car. What are, why are they there is basically what you need to know every single time. Why did you put me over, officer? Why are you asking me to get out the car? What these are our rights as citizens to ask every time, mm -hmm. and also always fail the police. <laughs> but also, the Fourth Amendment is important. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Which is what? Uh, <laughs> yes, the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures by your government. That's beautiful. Everybody right? has that unless you waive it, and yes. that's if you have a crime. Absolutely, you've committed. Yeah. Let's watch number three. What's going on, Mr. Checkpoint? Big fan. Um, I got a question for you. If I uh, refuse that field sobriety test in California, will I go to jail? Peace, man. Why are you laughing? <laughs> well, it definitely depends on the officer, unfortunately. He, if he refuses, that's his right. But most of the time, they'll take them just for refusing. And that's just something that needs to be corrected, especially in California. Like, people don't understand, like, I'm not here under, like, um, we're not under arrest. I'm just, you're just asking me to comply to a test. They're two very different things. Mm. So. And what's the training? Are you trained if someone denies a field sobriety test, but you um, don't yeah. have reason to necessarily think they are under the influence? Is you, are you told to let them go? And no, we're not told to let them go, but what we are told is to get a expert on that. 
Not all officers are an expert in getting a DUI. That's why they have DUI checkpoints, and those specific officers know how to tell when somebody's under the influence. Well, they're supposed to be known. So we actually right. have to go to a specific DUI school to get trained on how to do those things. Interesting. Yeah, and how so many officers every, go through that school? Or? Exactly. Not even half. Not even oh, half. Man. Yeah. So. Okay, and we then absolutely have rights Stephanie, like how many people do you represent though that refuse the field sobriety uh, test as opposed to failed the field sobriety test? Does that make sense? Yeah, so the field sobriety test is voluntary all day long. And the field sobriety test, if he's talking about blowing into the machine or doing the heel toe, you can refuse that all day long actually. And the only thing it does for an officer is help them decide under the circumstances whether or not they believe this person is too impaired to drive. Yes. And that's it. But also... They have to ask certain questions like, um, do you have any medical conditions? Do you ha suffer from epilepsy? All these questions because someone could lose balance. That's right. right. And then they arrest them because they're drunk and then they take their blood and guess what? There's zero. There's, thank There's you, nothing. nothing in their system. Right. And what she's talking about is the DRE, right? The drug yeah. recognition expert who comes to the scene yes. and they get it wrong all the time. <laughs> okay, they get it wrong all the time. <laughs> but they're still valid experts in court for some right, reason because they're going to say, oh, well, you know, he had um, slurred speech and his tongue was green. That's one no joke on the record in court. Thank you. And said he was high on marijuana because his tongue was green. Oh, that bizarre. doesn't exist, right? Doesn't no, exist no. at all. Makes no or sense. Or they pull him over. They smell weed. Boom. You're obviously high at this moment. And now you are under the influence because you can't tell me what you're doing or whatever it is. And you're under arrest. All those things happen all the time. And the DRE just wow. doesn't understand. Yeah, I mean, as someone who spent the night in jail for DUI and I refused the field sobriety test and my police report actually said slurred speech, uh, pale face, I was antagonistic. Like, oh. But because okay. I had the recording, the judge is like, well, he wasn't antagonistic. Right. His speech wasn't slurred. Yeah. My mug shot showed the bloodshot water eyes weren't necessarily bloodshot. Right. And so that's why the recording's so important. Mm -hmm. But I think for this question specifically, yeah. Um, refusing the field sobriety test, you could go to jail, unfortunately, whether you're sober or not. But, yeah, correct. That's but the reality. my opinion is refusing it is the best way to uh, not have a DUI later on your record, potentially yeah. once you hire an attorney. Right, because true. Because right. they can be like, well, you don't even have that evidence instead of failed, failed, failed. Correct. And yeah. when correct. they say fail, it's so funny because they don't know. when, Like the bloodshot, watery eyes that you just said right now, I've asked every single peace officer on the stand when they say bloodshot, watery eyes, and I say, well, what causes that? And no one can actually tell me. Not a single officer has ever I'm been able to surprised. tell me. Right. Because what is that? Right. What does right. that indicate that anybody, you're drunk? Anybody can have blood anybody shot, can. watery eyes it's for just, a and that's, million different reasons. Right, and they can never answer the question. So you can always refuse, refuse the field sobriety tests. It depends on the officer whether or not they will arrest you that's based right. on the totality of the circumstances right. and then yes. the DA if they're going to prosecute it at the very end of the day. If you're refusing, I think in my opinion, you have to potentially be ready to go to jail. Yeah. And like for yes. me, when the officer said, well, you're going to go to jail, I just said, okay. Yeah. And like, I just figured that was the road I was going to go on without just complying. And it personally worked out for me. Yeah. Again, I had the footage, but. That's I'm going to be honest. You probably would have gone to jail anyway. Right. I probably would have failed, right? Test? How many people like have a passing field sobriety test? I've never, no. I don't know. No, no. Yeah, I don't right? know any. No, and <laughs> yeah. no, they don't. And they're subjective because they're like, well, you're done. And so right. no, you would have gone either way. Yeah. So for the final checklist, Russell said to always film the police. <laughs> yes. What do you think, Stephanie? I second that, absolutely. What would another tip okay. be? <laughs> My, okay. If an officer is going to ask you if you have committed a crime, do not answer that question. Even if the officer tells you, I will let you go. The reason is you're admitting that you committed a crime and the officer very likely cannot let you go at that moment. He has a job to do and it's a trick. So please don't do that. To touch on it, can officers lie to you? Yeah, they Are can lie. Are you trained to lie? <laughs> no. No, not, not trained to lie, but you not can lie. But I can, of course. You can right. lie. It's I not a lie. crime for an officer to lie. No. No. Okay, good it's to know. Yeah, unfortunately. What would your tip be? My tip would be definitely anytime you're pulled over, always film the police and ask them why you're being pulled over. Ask them what they are doing there. What did you see me do? Ask them constantly questions over and over again until they get you get an answer. Those are your rights. Know your rights. And that's... What about the sergeant? If you ask for a sergeant, they never come to the scene. Is that mandatory? 
No. Oh, in San Diego it is. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> and what she touched on was basically, if you have an issue, you can always ask for a supervisor. And you can always ask for a supervisor for anything, even if it's minor, even if you feel unsafe. Just mm -hmm. say, you know what, I want your supervisor. And keep saying it because they could refuse, but they are not supposed to. They're supposed to get the supervisor as soon as you ask. Yep. I'm going to suggest that you be polite. And again, you always film the police, you refuse searches, and you try to not answer as many questions as possible. I like the style of asking questions instead of answering them. You know, why did you pull me over? Yeah. Do you know why I pulled you over? You say, why did you pull me over? <laughs> yes. Right? I personally like that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I think that oh, wraps really? it up. I want to thank <laughs> Russell, Hadia, and Stephanie. Yeah, no I think we had a great time yeah. talking yeah, about- great. Really? Keep sending the videos because yeah. those questions yes. are awesome. Yes. And everybody has those questions. More questions, more videos. Always film the police. And thank you for tuning in. <laughs>